Hi and welcome to another episode of Retro Core Volume 8 here. On this month's uh, show we've got Transformers on the Famicom, X Multiply for Arcade, we've got Rockman X4 on the Saturn, Nepal Tales on the Dreamcast, that I'm a dojo for the Super Famicom, we've got Shy the Month which is going to be Big Goody Man, we've got Sonic CD coming up and Mega Panel too. But kicking it all off is Trizeal. Okay, Trizeal may not be a retro game, in fact it's a brand new Dreamcast shooter that came out last month, but it is retro at heart. So that's why we're going to feature it on today's show. The best thing about Trizeal is it's so easy to get into, or Trizeal I should say. As you can see in the bottom uh, left hand corner, we've got a couple of different coloured uh, blobs. We've got a red, we've got a green and we've got a blue. So there we go, there's the uh, green one, which looks very good at the moment. And there's a the blue, which is a laser. And you power these up by collecting um, the multi coloured balls, which are there. Each ball that powers up the same weapon, so uh, it's there. The beauty of Tree Sail is, is when you power up one weapon, you can combine it with others. So as you can see, I powered up the uh, red pretty much to the top. I'm not having to power up the green to the top. But because the red is also powered up quite high, you can actually fire it at the same time as firing the um, green laser. You may notice these things falling down, which are sort of like birds or whatever, and that they vary in size. But they are actually uh, powered up points, so um, the more you collect in a row, the bigger they become. The bigger they are, the more points you get for them. Anyway, the bastard of a part. He's dead. I find the best combination to have is uh, use the wide weapon with laser and the rockets powered up as well. In a minute, Let's see if we can get these bonus points to oh, no, out. Go we'll get those bonus points bigger. Yeah, as you can see at the moment, it says a uh, breakout on the screen. And what that means, if you destroy everything in the area within the time limit, you get like a bonus. Unfortunately, I've got a bit of a naff weapon, so I'm not going to get any bonuses. 
Right, this is where the shit hits the fan. Billions of meteorites coming my way. But there is one but good point. You can uh, power up your weapons to the max. Fuck's sake, I can't believe it today. Do you believe that I've actually finished this game on hard? Fucking hell. Just not my day today. Look at that. Well, usually, honestly, um, <laughs> this this part of the oh fuck, this part of the game isn't that hard, but uh, for some reason I'm just not doing it today. Fucking composite video, that's it. Got to get back on the VGA. Every time you play Tree Seal, you get like little bonuses for your game. So we've got the arcade mode, and you've got score attack mode. You got the ranking there, which you uh, put in on the internet. And we've got a sound test. Okay, you got config backup and return. But the best part is the actual um, score attack. So you can choose whatever stage you want. So as you can see I've completed the game, like I said before. And you've got this bonus game called Lifting. So the idea behind this is to blow up uh, these two uh, towers here. And then after that, leave a little monkey guy in the middle here. It will start throwing up a brick, and uh, what you've got to do is uh, keep bouncing that up into the air, and that's it really. Easier said than done though, because um, when you start off, you got absolutely fuck all in weapon power, no bombs as well, and that's it. One hit and you're dead. But what you do actually get when you finish the game is a bonus game. Here is that bonus game. An extra level taken from one of uh, Triangle Services all the shooters, which I can't pronounce the name of, so I won't even bother trying. So how do we rate uh, Trizeal? 
Well, as I said before, it's not exactly the best looking Dreamcast shoot out there. But it certainly is one of the most playable. A lot better than Chaos Seed, which was released uh, not that long ago. And while this game may not look as hot as the others, it sure makes up for it in playability. The soundtrack is uh, okay, nothing too special. I've heard worse. So we're very happy to give a try zeal. The retro core score of 9 out of 10. An amazingly good shooter in a retro type of way that all retro shooting fans should love. For me to introduce this one, Rockman X4 for the Sega Saturn. So you can choose between two things. Two, sorry, start again. So you can choose between two different characters, Rockman and Zero, or better known as Mega Man in the West. So I'll give uh, Rockman a try first. is actually very fast. Probably one of the most playable Rockman games out there. It's certainly better than those uh, shitty ones on the Game Boy Advance. You know, Rock Man 4 and you know, all that bollocks. What the hell's all that about? This room Rockman was a good platformer. Like all Rockman games, this one features the uh, respawn, which basically means when you kill something, if you move off the screen, the little bastards will come back. So I see I've just killed all of them. And lo and behold, they're back again. Fucking magic. Throughout the game, Rockman can pick up different uh, special powers and so on to help him. At the moment, I'm using his rocket boots. That's 
well as the rocket boots, you can choose different weapons by just clicking the L or R buttons. Very stupid to look in. But nothing beats the original blaster. As you can see graphically, Rockman X4 is very nice. Lots of transparencies there. Nice big sprites. And everything moves around at a fair pace. Oops. There's one thing about this Rockman game though. And then um, you can't actually do the levels in any order that you want. Well, you can do the levels in any order that you want. But um, some levels require special items. And if you don't have those items, then you can't complete the level. Which is the Air Force base requires you to have these boots. So if you don't have the boots, you can't actually get to certain parts of the level. One thing, that I could, one thing that I could never really figure out, and that's that the Rockman games were made for kids. What the fucking rock art? Could that be the reason why they're called Rockman? Well, I wonder if Konami will try and sue Capcom for that. Capcom soundtracks are pretty um, good on the Rockman games. Actually, one of the soundtracks which are very popular are Western players. No idea why though. They're good, but they're not that good. So throughout the game, you get these little um, cutscenes, which are actually quite high quality animation. It's just a shame that the uh, Cine pack used on this uh, game isn't that clear. Also, it's all in Japanese. It's okay for me, but <laughs> it's not going to be okay if you can't understand it. Anyway, onto the game. One feature which I really like about Zero is when he hits stuff, the whole screen pauses. As you can see there. When I first heard about it, I thought it'd be quite a bad uh, feature, but it does actually suit the game. Get off your little shit. So we're having two characters to play the game with. 
uh, Rockman being one and Zero being the other one. It's certainly going to keep you occupied for quite some time. And it's exact. It's not exactly some uh, walk in the park either. Fun challenge. So anyway, if you've got a Sega Saturn, or even a PlayStation, I think that's on the PlayStation this game, you could do a lot worse than get this than um, Rockman X4. Definitely recommend it. Oh shit! So here you got to actually get up for the um, the walls close in on you. And do that. Anyway, as I was saying, highly recommended game here. Final platformers should be picking this one up in no time. That's not even that expensive either. So Retro Core very happy to give Rockman X4 and the Sega Saturn a good 8 out of 10. Look at the size of him. New feature here in RetroCore, Gamer for your mobile phone. The game you're about to see is coming from the Japanese Sharp mobile phone, the V603SH for Vodafone in Japan. So what game we're going to be showing you? Let's take a look. That's right, House of the Dead. The loudest. So this game mobile, House of the Dead, you can actually control it using the uh, D-pad. Or you can actually tilt the phone from side to side using the M control, which is the motion detector. And there's only two phones in the world that have that at the moment, and this is one of the phones. But we're just going to play with the D-pad, considering uh, I'm, have, I'm having to video this. Okay, so you can choose your character. You can go Rogan or G. So we'll have an uh, auto reload, it's a lot easier. You've got a lock on, make it a bit easier. And just for the sake of the video, we'll put it on easy. So first thing you notice is the graphics are actually quite nice. And don't forget that this is no um, Nokia N-Gage. This is a normal telephone. It's not made for gaming. And I bet all you people outside Japan are agreeing with Envy as well. Don't worry, next month we'll be showing you Initial D. Just like the arcade. Of course you're going to look up and down as well, as well as left and right. Oops, someone behind me. 
Oh, that sound you heard there was a vibration. <laughs> Give me a bit of a shock. Oh, fuck off. Not just the to reload. It's even got the speech in there. Let's go on Dutchy. That's just my uh, custom cable dying. Admit in parts, the graphics do actually look better than the Sega Sound version. Okay, the textures are on as detailed, but they're not exactly as blocky as the Sega Sound version. And it is a bit slower. Well, not a bit slower, it's a lot slower. But still, for the mobile phone, it's fairly impressive. I'll probably say the worst point about it is the audio. Then again, it's not that bad. Oops, one behind me, I think. Oh, there it is. Now I know what you're probably thinking, probably thinking, well, it may look good, but it's on a mobile phone, isn't it? So it's only going to have like one or two stages. Well, actually, it doesn't. It's got actually four stages. And they're all pretty close to the original arcade version, which is um, pretty surprising. And what do you want? Go on, go on, give me a life. Go on, go on. So anyway, there you have it. That's uh, House of the Dead for the mobile phone. If it ever gets released in the West, I certainly recommend downloading it. And once again, I'll just let you know this for the uh, Vodafone. So any of you people on, um, I don't know, any other networks probably won't be able to get it. Unless Sega port it. So what sort of score shall we give this game? Well, if it was on a real console, I wouldn't be giving it a 9 or 8 out of 10. Due to the fact that it is a little bit slow. But when you consider this is running on a normal mobile phone, I think it deserves a good 8 out of 10. Very impressive indeed.
Batman for the Sega Mega Drive. Yeah, him Batman might look like a little weedy guy. He is in fact here to kick ass. Based on the first movie, which is the best movie so far. This version by Sunsoft for the Mega Drive certainly captures the feel of the movie. Very dark and gloomy image to the game, just like the first movie. Excellent soundtrack as well. As always, use the batarangs first. I found the best way to kill them is to land on them like that with your knees. Then give me a dig from behind. That one can't do it now. Oh my shit now. Batman's moves range from um, kicks like this, which come in very handy when these little punks stand up. There you go. He's got his batarangs, which I just saw before. And he's got his batarang, or whatever it's bloody called. His bloody grappling hook. And he can actually block as well. And his powers of blocking are that good, he can block a torpedo. Look at that. How many men do you know can block a torpedo? One thing you got to be careful with is when you use your uh, batarangs, or whatever they're called, that you don't actually fire them off too fast, because it won't actually register as a hit. Here we go, his base jack up there. Whoops. Go on jack thing, you know what I'll do ya. Yeah? Into the mutant um, biohazard waste. As you can see, the game actually follows the movie quite well. Don't try that at home. Yeah, take that giant haystacks. So Batman is quite of a 
pretty good classic platform action game. I was actually surprised at how good it still looks after all these years. You know, it is 15 years old now. And it still sounds pretty good as well. The extra life down there, which um, you can keep cheating and get many extra lives. A bit like Rockman, which we saw before. This game's got respawn. So I should kill something or take something. Go back to the screen and it suddenly magically appears. Actually, I need the energy up there. Oh, fuck off. Thank you. There we go, we got the big fat guy here with the stereo. Oh, and he's dead. It's amazing. <laughs> Here we go onto the Gotham City streets. The blast our way through all the Joker's cars. So you got your little. Um, Missiles here, which take out the uh, enemies much easier. <laughs> as well as the car level, there's also a better. As well as the car level, there's always a Batwing level, and at the end you got the battle with the Joker, which is very nice indeed. So overall, I'm very really happy to say Batman for the Mega Drive still plays quite well, and we're going to give it the Retro Core score of 8 out of 10. Not a bad old decent platform, if you can find it worth tracking down. And if you're very lucky, you can get the Japanese version, which comes in a very cute little tiny box. Kage for the Famicom. Okay, we can choose between two players, we've got Hayate and Kayade. First impressions may look like a bit of a uh, stride the clone, but it is in fact a very nice ninja game. There was at one point in time when I used to think um, what the hell was everyone going on about when they said the Famicom was the best machine ever? But when you see games like this you can sort of understand why it was much more appreciated than the Sega Master System. It may be an 8-bit game but certainly it plays like um, the modern games. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at playing it. There you go, take like that.
as you can see the game's not exactly that easy. So it's certainly got a good challenge to it. Ah, fucking jump. All the things coming, that's why. Come games is usually really uh, tiny sprites with uh, shitty colours or whatever. Well, this game does have tiny sprites, but uh, colours aren't that bad. And they're pretty well defined. Suppose if you had to call this game something, you call it a cross between um, Strider and Shinobi, I guess. Whoop. That's nothing to be ashamed of, though, because it's actually a very good game. Big badass. There's one thing missing though, we could do with a bit of ninja magic. So what sort of score am I going to give this game? Well it's nice, it's got a challenge, it looks nice, it sounds good. And it's on the Famicom. So that deserves a bit of a bonus I guess. So we're going to give it a score of 8 out of 10. I know we give 8 out of 10 to quite a lot of games. But that's because we feature usually good games really. So yeah, 8 out of 10 it is. Very nice platform, come slash them up for your Famicom. So if you can manage to get hold of a copy, pick it up, you won't be disappointed. Guaranteed to get at least a couple of weeks of gameplay out of it. Unlike me, look at that.
Here we go, Napel Tail for the Sega Dreamcast. Hadisha in Daydream. So you're probably wondering what type of game this is. Well, from the introduction, you're probably not going to get many hints. It is in fact a platform RPG. Something of a rarity these days. Unfortunately, like most games of this type, uh, this one didn't get translated into English. So this is the actual world. And as you can see there, there are a few paths that lead off in different directions. Each direction sends you to a different, different uh, platform. Um, and in each platform world you have to complete a certain task. Complete the task, collect the items. And uh, build them up within the game. So let's just skip straight to the actual gameplay part. So before you can actually play in the normal levels, you have to take part in this training session, which is bloody annoying. Okay, so here we are. We can actually play the game now. I've to got waiting for like 10 minutes for the, for the introduction. This is uh, Adisha's room, in which you can save and whatever. Just go for a bit of a sleep. Ah, isn't she cute? Look at that, I was just about to do the voice then. No need. <laughs> okay, here comes our real helper. He gives you advice on what to do. So 
so graphically the game is not bad it's not excellent I've seen better but it's fairly nice one of the big um, bonus points of this game is the actual audio it's amazingly good the title theme being sung by quite a popular um, voice actress you go to help out this old guy there get him off the side go on give us some money you old bastards for helping anyway he's just rapping on about his problems now well, let's go to a platform level should look around his house but I'm not going to bother so here we are on the platform levels As you can see, it's very colourful. It reminds me a lot of um, the Crystal Dynamics game, uh, Pandemonium, or the Magical Hoppers as it was called in Japan. Like the Japanese version is a lot better, thanks to um, Bandai re re uh, doing the characters. Whoa! As you can see we've got a problem now, the bridge is out. The weird thing is that the signs are actually written in English. But you can't zoom in on them far enough to read them. As you can see here, this is uh, where you pick up different items. You can actually pick up different records and listen to them. Thanks to uh, losing the save data, I haven't got any. Okay, on with the next game. Right, so the amount of time, originally we were going to have a recording man on the Super Famicom, but I thought this game is actually worse than that. It's Transformers for the Famicom. Now watch this, I get killed straight away. Look at that, fucking hell. Now the main problem with this game is you can't see the bloody bullets half the time. And there you go, you just saw another problem. I was shooting the shit out of him. And did he die? Did he fuck? Yet again. Game over. It's probably the fastest I've ever died in a game. <laughs> so what is the main problem with the uh, Transformers on the Famicom? Well, let's just see. You can't see the enemy uh, bullets half the time. As you can see just there, they're pretty much the same colour as the background. The actual movement of your character is a bit on the sluggish side. You can't attack guys down here. Unless you turn into your... Uh, to the... Um, what is it? Van? And then if you are the van, you're stuck when you come to shoot when you want to jump. I'll shoot them. I 
Overall, the game is very poorly designed. X multiply classic shooting from item. Item are probably best known for their uh, shooter R type, and also a lot of people hail that as one of the best shooters of the time. Personally, though, I never thought it was that good. This game on the other hand is a true classic. Considering it was made in 1989, the actual animation on the, um, the tentacles to follow your ship are very high. The soundtrack is pretty nice on this game. Nothing too amazing, but it suits the action well. Graphically for 1989, it's also pretty nice. Pretty good going there for Iron. Oh, didn't see that coming. Have you ever noticed that many shooters during the later 80s and early 90s had alien rip-off type monsters? Something tells me I'm gonna get killed in a minute. Luckily your tentacles can uh, take away the bullets on your way. Actually what we are missing is a couple of smart bombs, well, that would be very handy. But to be honest you don't need smart bombs in a shooting like this, but you need this skill. Unfortunately, I don't think I've got that much anymore. Oh fuck. Oh, I'm gonna get killed here. Guaranteed. Oh, maybe not. They don't make uh, end of level screens like that anymore. So how is uh, X Multiply to play? It well, actually plays quite nice. The ship moves at a good speed. It's very fluent. Um, you know, it reacts to where you put it. There's none of this um, man of its own shout. Weapon powered up, so okay, they're pretty much standard, nothing too special. 
The latest is quite nice, but apart from that, it's pretty much the bog standard. You know, missiles, homers, and uh, the laser, which I just mentioned. There's no bombs as well, which I said just before. Oops! There we go, game over. So, anyway, Retro Code's very happy to give X Multiply a score of. Wait for it. Okay, but don't wait for it then. We're gonna give it a score out of 7 out of 10. Quite a good classic shooter. Thank you, item. Sonic CD for the Mega Drive Mega CD So in this case, the Sega won the Mega Now some people say the first Sonic was the best Some people say Sonic 2 is the best Which I can actually uh, agree on Now some people say Sonic 3 was the best Actually I think Sonic 3 was the shittest but personally, the best Sonic out of all of them was this one. Sonic CD. As you can see, I just hit a pass barrier there. Get enough speed up and I'll shoot into the past. so good. Just turn that base down. Okay. Yeah, one of the things that makes Sonic CD so good is not only do you have the standard levels, but you can actually go back into the future. That makes any sense. <laughs> and forward into the future. Making each level last twice as long as the original game
One thing that must be said about this Japanese version and the uh, European version is the music is excellent. Unlike the American version, which sounds like shit. Why the fuck did change the music? I don't know. First boss, Doctor Robotnik. So the idea here is to knock him when he puts down his defense. Who's that? Could that be the very first showing of uh, Amy, Sonic's girlfriend? There's Metal Sonic there. Other off. Gonna have his own nasty way with her. Also, some parts in the game you get hidden walls which you can break down, send you into different uh, sections. Of course, like all the other Sonic games, you gotta play properly and collect 50 rings. Collect 50 rings, you can get to go to the bonus level. The good old water level. Sonic games, this one's got a nice water level. The music on this level is really nice. Get out the water here. Be one of my favorite songs on Sonic this, this one. So let's try and collect uh, 50 rings so we can get to the bottom stage. and said that then though we got spider
As you can see, you can't just uh, dash through the levels like you can on the, um, the other Sonic games. So I take a time here. So I should end up getting bounced back into poles like me. And you have to find this right. And up. Wow, I jumped at the wrong time. These are quite nice because you sort of grab all of you. Here we go with the Sonic CD bonus stage. As you can see, it's in 3D. Probably the only part of Sonic CD that actually makes use of the Mega CD uh, powers. What you gotta do is uh, jump on these UFOs here. 